It's got new molars, new gear, new creatures, new features, and a whole lot more. The public test server for the grounded into the wood update number 0.12.0 went live a few days ago and introduced a ton of new content into the game along with a significantly sized expansion to the playable area. And after playing through the PTS and dutifully digging my way into every last termite tunnel and wandering around all the wooden walkways, I still have a sinking suspicion that we're going to see some additional content trickle in before update 0.12.0 goes officially live. But if you want to know everything that's already in the public test server or are looking for information about what's coming to Grounded, then you've come to the right channel because Grounded themed, Grounded related content is basically all that I do here and if you enjoy that then you could do me a huge favor by gently touching the like button and I hope that this video earns your subscription today. Now let's move on with today's video going over everything you currently need to know about the Grounded Into the Wood Update public test server and take a look at some of what will be coming to the game in update 0.12.0. What up? It's Tiny Pirate Gaming bringing you a concise and comprehensive guide covering everything you need to know about what's coming to Grounded with the End of the Wood update based off of what's currently available in the public test server. Also, just a quick reminder that if you're playing in the public test server, be aware that some of the new objects in the game could potentially move or shift by the release of the full update. So be mindful of where you build. Now to start things off, a series of new regions have been added to the corner of the upper yard alongside and in front of the shed, and within each of these new areas are new creatures, new collectibles, and new landmarks to be discovered. There's treasure filled canyons, a tipped over grill along with a small desert of sizzling charcoal, two bikes, the porch of the shed, and a wood pile region that's catacombed with claustrophobic caverns that are most oftentimes crowded with combative critters. Among these new regions, you're likely to find additional orbs of raw science, new field stations, as well as more milk molars that you can use to boost up your player and inventory stats even further. So far, I've found 10 new milk molars, 5 of which are regular, with the other 5 being mega. Within the canyon region of the upper yard and tucked away behind some spider webs is one of the new mega molars. Deep in the bottom chamber of the termite den is another. Back close to the fence and atop the tarp that covers the wood pile is one more. You'll have to move quickly and cautiously to get this next one because it's inside of the tipped over grill and nestled behind some sizzling charcoal. And the last new mega molar I found is located beneath of the grill's lid. Moving on to the regular milk molars, there's one located inside of an elevated and exposed pipe that's found down in the canyons of the upper yard. You can find another one inside of the charcoal bag that's beside of the tipped over grill. Within the twisting termite tunnels close to the back corner of the yard is where you can crack open another one. Underneath of the tarp that's above the wood pile, there's another molar that may or may not be guarded by strangely colored spiderlings. And finally, along a ledge in the canyons of the upper yard is where you can find the last one. There is also a ton of new raw science orbs that can be found across the new regions and some new resources that will require you to unlock some new gear before you can collect them. And the only way to unlock that new gear will be by taking down some of the new creatures and analyzing their productivity inducing parts. First, we've got some dust mites, and these little things really like to attack in swarms. They have all of the same attack patterns as the other mites around the yard and can even create dense dust clouds that will slow your movement speed, reduce your attack power, and can also consequentially cloud your vision. There's also the new ladybirds which are more aggressive than their lower yard cousins the ladybug and can perform an additional attack. Next is the ladybird larva, no relation to the ladybird I'm told. These spicy larva patrol the upper yard and are likely to be the most commonly encountered creature that you'll come across up there. And they have this dodge animation that, don't get me wrong, can be totally annoying but is also so cool. I mean just look at that thing, look how cool that looks. They are also currently immune to spicy damage, but apparently that's a glitch that will likely be patched out before the official release of update 0.12.0. Anyway, my favorite of the new creatures is the Black Ox Beetle, which is very tanky with high HP and can also deal heavy damage by slamming its body into you or by throwing rocks. 
and of course the highly anticipated termites which come in two forms, regular and soldier, and will likely swarm you with consecutive waves of close quarters combat whenever you trek towards or through their tunnels. There's also a termite king in the bottom of the termite den that unfortunately hasn't spawned in for me, and there's also an infected wolf spider, but word around the stream of is that this creature will only spawn in during a new playthrough currently. There's also a new mini boss stink bug under the porch of the shed that I call Big Green, and I get the impression that this may be a placeholder for a new boss that could come in the future, but currently it's just a really tough stink bug with some new attacks but won't reward you with anything special. Unlike the final new creature, the Scarab, which is this little bug that runs away super fast and drops twinkling shells which are needed to upgrade your weapons and tools beyond level 7. The only way I've managed so far to harvest one of these critters is to shoot it with a level 7 crossbow while using the new tier 3 splinter arrows. You can craft the new splinter arrows using 5 wooden splinters and 2 dust mite fuzz, but before you can collect wooden splinters, you'll need the new tier 3 axe. In order to craft the tier 3 termite axe, you'll need 2 termite chompers, 3 termite parts, and 4 bug gloop, which can all be acquired after harvesting defeated termites. Using the termite axe, you'll be able to cut down burr weeds, which have been chained slightly and now drop spiky burrs, collect splinters, and also harvest poopa hides, which can be converted into poopa leather using a workbench or a jerky rack. Once you've acquired poopa leather, you'll be able to craft the new tier 3 black ox hammer using one black ox horn, five black ox parts, and two poopa leather. There's also a termite armor chest piece, which makes me think that by the time of this update's full release, we might have a full set of termite armor, as well as some other additional content that could be trickled in, but that's just a tiny pirate gaming theory. There's also some lint on the porch of the shed that can be converted into lint rope using a spinning wheel that's needed for the new higher tier armor and the new burr floor construction pieces and probably some other future stuff too. You can also find the new sawdust scab scheme deep inside of the termite den and there's also a new burgle chip that will unlock the jewel recipes and additional weapon upgrades at the smithing station for a total of 5,000 raw science. These new jewels are used to upgrade your weapons and tools beyond level 7 and can only be crafted using the new twinkling shells that come from the ever elusive scarabs. There's also a super special secret sword known as the spicy coltana that can be unlocked by taking a tier 3 ox hammer to the bag of charcoal beside the tipped over grill and destroying the sizzling charcoal chunk inside. Beneath of the chunk you will find a paper that will unlock the recipe for this awesome looking katana style weapon. You can craft the Coltana using 2 spicy globs, 10 bug gloops, and 5 ever charcoal chunks. As the name implies, and much like the salty morning star, the spicy Coltana is automatically endowed with a spicy status effect and currently operates with the same attack animation and properties as the Antlion Greatsword. Alongside all these new recipes are a host of new resource materials that can be analyzed to help you earn some extra raw science and upgrade your brain power level. Additionally, within the labs and field stations is a new device known as a resource surveyor that can be used to target and mark specific resources onto your map menu. Along with this new feature are a ton more, including burr building materials, angled bounce web options, burning charcoals, additional uses for the grinder, the ability to auto-magically fast drop inventory items into storage chests, light color changing options, posable armor dummies, status effect markers on the heads up display, new treasure dig spots, more gear upgrades, multi-crafting options, and for all you creepers out there, you can now use your peeper to get a closer look at your surroundings. There's also some additional user interface adjustments and menu organization changes that were made, along with even more subtle alterations such as Antlion armor is now medium armor, light armor no longer gives a boost to stamina regen rate, so the backs technique is over, the grill's been moved and charcoal chunks look different and drop more rewards, the character's idle stance is different and roly polies aren't sickly anymore, punching, axe attacks and hammer swings have adjusted animations then they are all like super fast now the ant lion pits have a new attack and crusty roly poly armor can no longer be built and has become a grounded relic slash map collectible and the combat system has been readjusted so that the final swing in your attack combo deals the most damage again the backs is no longer relevant as a combat technique but it still works with the shovel okay 
One more thing, when starting a new game, you can create custom rules for a new save file that will allow you to adjust some of the gameplay mechanics for that specific world. These options range from things like Thirst and Hunger Drain to Pet Invincibility and even God Mode and Full Recipe Unlocks, along with a ton more that I am very excited to explore further in the future. And as I mentioned before, I have a feeling that between now and the full release of the End of the Wood update, we're likely to receive some more content as well as some rebalances to some of the content that's already available in the public test server because while recording these voiceovers, they already dropped another patch. And once the full update goes live, I'll be producing more comprehensive guides going over all of this new material in my signature tutorial format style. And if you're interested in learning all about these future grounded changes in a concise tutorial format presentation, then you've come to the right channel because here on Tiny Pirate Gaming, grounded themed, grounded related content presented in tutorial format is basically all that I do here, and if you enjoy that, then you could do me a huge favor by gently touching the like button, and I hope that this video earned your subscription today. You can also follow me on Twitch for live streams, Twitter for channel news, or join the Tiny Pirate Gaming Discord for discussions on grounded gaming, content creation, and more, along with me and the rest of the hashtag Tiny Crew. So whether I see you here in the comments, over on the Twitch sphere, or someplace else across the streamiverse, just know that I really appreciate all of your support, and thank you so much for watching. Until next time. Arm matey, watch your step. There be a tiny pirate here.